Thank you. As a mom, I really do enjoy braiding my daughter's hair, but sometimes I have to admit it takes a long time, <laughs> especially because I am an amateur. And so I have a couple of tools in my pocket. We watch TV. We watch kids' content. You see, not only does it entertain us, but it also keeps her still so that I have a fighting chance of making a part that's straight. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we decided to watch My Little Pony. All was well, that is, until the black pony with purple accents was cued in on the scene with ominous music. This was Nightmare Moon, the evil alter ego of Princess Luna. Princess Luna was the jealous younger sister of Celestia, the white pony, the day pony, the pony who was more favored, the pony who was in charge of Equestria. Princess Luna, a.k.a. Nightmare Moon, challenges Celestia to the throne. And for that, Celestia banished her own sister to moon prison for a thousand years. Something was wrong with me that day. I must have been really frustrated because I ended up blurting, turn it off! And she looked at me, my daughter looked at me like I was nuts. Why was I so upset about ponies? It really wasn't that, as you might suspect. What I was really trying to turn off was anti-black bias in children's media. Have you seen it? You see the characters, they range in color from white to black, which ever so conveniently aligns with their good and evil natures. The color scheme, you see it not only in their skin tone, but you see it in their costume that they wear just about the entire time, unless they're switching teams. And it is the teams that you see, the white and the black teams, they are opposing. And you, the audience, are forced you are forced to root for the white to win. You see, there's a pattern. White is good, black is bad. White wins, black loses. Where do you see it? You see it in the podcasts and the radio that you listen to. You see it in the shows and the movies and the videos that you watch. You see it in the video games and the ed tech apps that you play. How about Ursula in The Little Mermaid, dressed in black? How about Robotnik in the Sonic series? How about Scar and the hyenas in The Lion King? How about Shadow Man in Princess and the Frog, which had my daughter up for two weeks? Had because of nightmares. I can't spend all my time talking about examples. Just go ahead and Google cartoon villains and you'll see all of the examples. It shows up in that color trope. It shows up in underrepresentation. It shows up in misrepresentation. And all of that anti-black bias is racist. It took me a while to even settle on that word. I was trying to say offensive, but it really is racist. When you watch your children watching TV, what you are actually watching is conditioning they are conditioned to fight, fear, and flee black people. And they are being conditioned to fawn, protect, 
and love white people. According to the American Psychological Association, according to the Department of Justice, and according to numerous university studies, colorblindness is actually a lie. Six months old, a baby can begin to categorize people by the color of their skin. By age four, they can identify and name all of their colors, and it is at that time that they can associate whiteness with higher class and wealth. White is good, black is bad, white wins, black loses. That is the pattern. When they see that pattern, it seeps into their soul. Now, they're brilliant, and we love our kids, but they are young and impressionable. And so in their minds, they create cause and effect. White causes good and, dare I say, deserves good. And black causes bad and, dare I say, deserves bad. And so we can say, oh, those poor, unfortunate souls. Those black children, no wonder they have low self esteem What about the non-black children? What happens in their minds? For example, when white boys watch TV, they actually feel pretty good about themselves. They're the heroes. But what happens when they turn it off? They are unable or unwilling to formulate meaningful relationships with people who do not look like them, people of different races, people who look like me, look like my daughter, and look like my husband. That inability or unwillingness leads to a stunting of their emotional and mental growth. With racially motivated domestic terrorism on the rise in the United States once again, And we also have a rise of something else. We have the rise of the black indigenous BIPOC, the black indigenous people of color, the BIPOC population in the United States. By 2041, we will reach an inflection point. By 2041, we will actually be majority BIPOC in the United States, and so we need to make a decision very soon, if not now, what kind of future do we want? There's two paths. One, we do nothing. Status quo. Do you see the clash coming? Because it's already here. How about the second, how about the second choice? If we do something right now, at least in the children's media space, we have a fighting chance. We can help develop children who become newly minted adults in 2041, who will be able to see themselves, to be able to see themselves with love and embrace them with love, irrespective of their color, their race, their nationality, their neurotype, their religion, their sexual orientation, or their gender. What kind of future do you want? And how are we going to even get there? Some people are, you might be saying, I know. Let's add in some racially ambiguous characters so they like check all the boxes. <laughs> You all know that that's not the answer. According to Tufts University, they, were, they did a study in 2018. They studied 1,500 cartoon characters, and only 5.6% of them were black human characters. We're at least 12% of the, the U.S. population. Black human characters in children's media are outnumbered by talking robots, talking animals, and monsters. 
That is underrepresentation, but there's also misrepresentation. That means how are we being seen? When that 5.6% is seen, we are disproportionately seen as violent, sexualized, older than our years, sinister, silly sidekicks. How about sassy, overly so, disrespectfully so, or props? When I saw all of this, when I saw the color trope, when I saw the under-representation, and when I saw the misrepresentation, I felt like it was a punch in my gut. You see, when I was growing up, I'm going to date myself. I grew up on Sesame Street, reading Rainbow, had a total crush on LeVar Burton. Yeah. And the Oprah Winfrey Show. I am the daughter of a preacher and a teacher. I did not have a lot of time in front of the television. And so as a mom, hit with a tsunami of content, trying to pick and choose what would be best for her, I was overwhelmed. And I began to see signs that her self-esteem was being affected. She bemoaned the fact that she didn't look like Elsa. She, want, she was phantom stroking long blonde hair that she didn't have. When she was drawing a monster, she drew the angry eyes and the teeth, but she also was burying down with her markers, trying to make it darker and darker with her little tiny hands, without even knowing why she was doing it. But then, I also saw her playing make-believe. But then, she also asked me to sing little nursery rhymes and to make up bedtime stories. And it was at that point I realized, I'm a creator. She's a creator. And in fact, if you're an educator trying to make up a lesson plan, you're a creator. In whatever profession you choose, you are a creator, so I need us to take a collective inhale. We're going to reimagine children's media. I'm going to spark a few ideas, but I want you to go home and make up some more. To address the color trope, you have to simply Stop yourself. When you're trying to make up a character and you want to make it look as scary as possible and you even think about using the color black, stop yourself. And say, wait a minute. Uh-oh, there's that lie of a pattern again. How else can I make the, 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 the cartoon character or the whatever character scary? I can use the maniacal voice. I can use the, the annoying voice. I can use the, the maybe, maybe a, an emoji. Or, or how about the musical score? When you consider your characters, let them have some fashion sense. Black is regal. Black is authority. Black is mastery. Let all of your characters, when they wear black, embody that. How about we create characters who have a deep sense of themselves? You pay your writers, and you pay them well to create a story arc where we actually get to know who they are. We actually understand their thought processes, and maybe they make mistakes, but they're not actually bad themselves. In order to address under-representation, I am calling all of you, he either here or online, to disrupt, 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 the children's media industry with an eruption of black love. The love of black, the love of black people, and the love of black cultures. Record those videos, write those books, 
start those podcasts. Imagine. In order to address misrepresentation, it's really quite simple. Eliminate all of those tropes. Eliminate the lazy storylines. And how about we eliminate wars, battles, and fights in children's media altogether? Do we really want to raise violent children? How about instead of them rooting for one person to dominate or the, over the other, one color to dominate over the other, how about they root over and over and over again for peaceful conflict resolution? So there's that pattern, that lie of a pattern, because we really know what creates winners and losers. It is the racist racism. It is systematic racism. Let us be able to replace that lie of a pattern with another mantra. As I said, I'm the daughter of a preacher. Please stand. Repeat after me. Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Dark, is Dark is lovely. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Let me tell you why everybody wins. Because over here, white is already getting the love. White is already considered good. But if you give this end of the spectrum love, if you give this end, then everyone in the middle from this end to this end gets the love. Do you understand that? Yes. So repeat after me. Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Dark is lovely. Dark is lovely. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Thank you. <laughs>